Okay, so today we're talking about how to be safe on the internet uh, in visiting secure and unsecure web pages. So foremost, one big example of this is HTTP versus HTTPS. Most HTTP websites uh, don't have any sort of protection on your data when you send them in and out between uh, from your computer to the server itself. So it's very easy for people to steal your data that way. So always make sure to be on HTTPS websites. This topic is really, really important. So that way you don't lose any sort of inf important information like credit cards or personal information on the website, uh, eh, on the web. So we're going to be talking about HTTP versus HTTPS, what makes a website secure. How to uh, how to find if a website is secure by looking at the actual URL of the website itself, recognizing fake and scam web pages, taking a look at phishing links and pop-ups, verifying if the web page is trustworthy, and what to do if you see an unpaged website, unsafe website. So, what makes a website secure? Foremost, as I said earlier, your web your web page should have HTTPS instead of HTTP. Web Did pages with HTTP. Excuse? Yeah, what's up? Thank you. A little bit sorry, slower. Okay, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Okay, so HTTP, HTTPS you websites. Just a little bit. Yeah. You're talking H really fast. Sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just used to talking fast. Sorry. So HTTPS websites are normally far more secure than HTTP websites. This is because with an HTTPS website, your data is encrypted and then sent to the actual server itself. Versus with HTTP websites, your your messages are just sent as plain text. So that way, if you were to insert a credit card information and you're buying something on that website, and it's an HTTP website, someone else can very easily steal that credit card number, the credit card numbers, and the data. While on an HTTPS website, your data will be encrypted when sending it back and forth between the servers. And thus, it'll be far harder for them to take your uh, information. Furthermore, there's a padlock on the on the icon var. When you're at a website, normally in the top right corner or in the top left corner, there's this little like padlock icon right next to the URL. If you see that padlock icon in there, that means that you're on a secure website and that you should have no trouble inserting private information there because it'll be safe and it'll be very hard for third party hackers to steal it from you. Furthermore, you need to make sure that the website is a real name. If you go to Amazon.com and instead of the O in Amazon, it's a zero, that's how you know that that website is trying to scam you because the Amazon link itself as just a normal lowercase o. So making sure that your web your web ah your web page URLs are accurate and don't have any sort of like misspelling or very, very slight differences between what they should be is an important step that you need to do in making sure that your website is secure. Furthermore, about pages are really, really important because within it up because within about page, they normally link to personal contact information to like the website itself. Like it'll link to Amazon's actual email instead of linking to some fishy email that doesn't quite say Amazon, that might say Amazons or Amazon, or instead of instead of at like a gmail.com, it might pop up to some weird other address. Making sure you have an about page that shows that the website truly links back to where you want it to be is important. And furthermore, if a website constantly gives you random pop-up requests or makes you click on weird uh, links to get between pages or whenever you click a button, It'll open a new web page leading to a completely different and unrelated ad. That normally means that that website is likely uh, trying to steal your information or take your data. And then furthermore, you, if, you're, if worse comes to worse, you can always look up the website. You can plug that website into Google and look up, is this website trustworthy? Is this website trying to steal my data? And you can take a look what other people have to say and what experts have seen on that website. Oh, there we go. This is more about HTTP versus HTTP. As I said earlier, HTTPS is secure because your data is encrypted versus HTTP where messages are treated as plain text. Furthermore, HTTPS websites have the padlock symbol while HTTP websites don't have the padlock symbol. This symbol, ah, uh, one sec, let me see if I can get out of this mode and actually show you the symbol itself. Okay, uh, yeah, cool. So here, when you click this thing, there's a little like padlock over there showing that, that, that your connection is secure. If there's no padlock over there, that means that this website is likely trying to steal your information. 
Furthermore, HTTPS websites are almost always used by trusted sites, while HTTP websites are normally used by websites that are trying to steal information from you. Ah, uh, yeah, I just went over that. Now, it's important to recognize a fake or a scam, a uh, fake uh, slash scam website because you're not always going to be on websites that you know, like Amazon for shopping for things. Sometimes, if you're looking up information, you might run across a fake or a scam website. As I said earlier, fake spellings like these are very, very prevalent in scam websites or websites that are phishing and trying to pretend to be a website that you know and trust. Furthermore, poor grammar and unprofessional design is normally a sign of scam web pages. Some web, some modern day web pages do not have the best design, but they will always have good spelling and good grammatical, uh, and, and they will always be phrased grammatically well. So make sure if anything sounds wrong to you, that means there's something, there probably is something wrong with the web page. And then furthermore, two good do to be true deals. Websites are not going to be offering you free iPhones or free million dollars They're, because that's too good to be true. You can't just give everyone a free iPhone. So if you see anything that seems like they're giving away things completely for free, it's very likely a scam. And then finally, strange pop-ups. As you can see over here, you see something like this where it's like a security a warning, your progr uh, a program has detected a virus on your computer or like uh, some like quote unquote reputable, reputable uh, brand like Norton VPN says that, hey, you need to install this to fix your computer. That likely means it's a scam. Later on, I'm going to go over what to do if you think you have a virus installed on your computer instead of clicking on these random pop-ups by these fishy websites. And then, of course, always make sure you check the web address before clicking on it. That way, you know if you're actually clicking on a website that you intend to be clicking on. Now, spotting phishing links and pop-ups. So fake emails are very, very prevalent. For example, something, he something that we haven't mentioned here is uh, what are it? spoofing scams. Occasionally, uh, you will get an email that looks like it's from yourself. These are called spoofing. It's when a hacker uses a different website to pretend to be your email address or a known email address and sends an email to you. For example, in uh, recently, I got an email from, from what looked like to be myself saying that, hey, I have logged into your Microsoft account and I've taken all of your passwords and details. You can verify this because it comes from your own email. And when I click on it, it actually does look like it's my own email. This was very, very scary to me because I was surprised. Normally, phishing scams come from an email that has something different. Something is slightly misspelled. It's not exactly the same email. This looked like it came exactly from my email. These phishing scam or these spoofing scams are really, really hard to spot because it's almost impossible because uh, because it looks like it's very authentic and legit. However, with all emails, what you can do is one second. Let me see if I can uh, pull it up. Wait. I think one sec. Sorry. I should have said this up beforehand. Uh, okay, I'll go, I'll come back to that later. Sorry. Uh, I'll I'll remind me at the end to talk about spoofing emails, and I'll give you guys a little bit of a tidbit on that. Let me go back to phishing. Uh, so phishing emails normally come from major corporations, or they look like they come from major corporations like banks, or or from Amazon, UPS, saying something about maybe a package was lost, or hey. Uh, something is wrong with your account, please input your details here so that way we can fix it. These are always fake and they're trying to take your information. If there's an issue from your bank, normally your bank will either contact or call you and they won't ask you to, and they won't say, hey, just give us your information and we'll fix it because they already have your information and know what to do. Furthermore, when you're on a web page that says that uh, uh, what, your, your computer is infected, you have a virus, and you need to click our link so that we can help you, they're normally actually installing malware on your computer instead of helping you. So you need to make sure to hover over links to see where they go and make sure to never enter email, never enter passwords into random emails. Go to the official website instead. Go look, put up your bank's uh, real web page in Google and check your account. See if something looks wrong there. Go to the UPS website itself. Check to see if your package is still being delivered. Don't always trust every email that you get. Now, how to make sure a website is trustworthy. As we said earlier, you can look up the website's name. For example, if you get a website called like 
uh, freeiphones.com to look at that website on Google and to see if that website is an accurate website and actually gives away free iPhones. More likely than not, the Google reviews will tell you, no, this website is a scam and do not go there. Furthermore, the contact details. You've got to make sure that the website result website leads you to an about page that gives you valid emails and valid links to people who can actually give you support and help you to prove that that website is a real website and not trying to take your information. And finally, uh, trusted seals like Norton. These You have to make sure that you don't see fake seals. And furthermore, a lot of websites will try to fake these. So looking for trusted seals is an important step, but you shouldn't have that be your primary, uh, your primary strategy because a lot of fake websites will say that we have security devices provided by Norton when really they're just lying to try to take your information. And using browser, uh, browser security. If your browser says not secure or deceptive site ahead, don't go. Unless this is a web page that you must absolutely visit, I wouldn't recommend using it because your browser knows a lot about what websites are, are phishing and trying to take your information because of people's reports. So anytime a browser says something is not secure or deceptive site ahead, if you must visit, don't in input any sort of personal information or anything important that you have. And finally, update your browser. The more you update your browser, the safer you'll be on the internet. And now, what to do if you visit an unsafe site? You, you, you should close the site, and you should clear your browser history to remove any sort of tracking cookies. That way, the website doesn't have any sort of foothold on your computer. And finally, you should run a security scan and change your passwords. To run a security scan, all you have to do is look up Windows Security, Open this, click on virus and threat protection, virus and threat protections, and then you can just quickly quick click quick scan. This will scan through all of your files and let you know if something is wrong with your computer and if you have a virus. Okay. Summary. Always check for HTTPS when entering a website before you enter any sort of personal information like credit cards or banking statements. And then make sure to be cautious of fake websites and phishing emails. I'll talk about spoofing emails at the end, a little extra bonus tip for you guys. And then finally, make sure to see your browser security warnings to avoid any uh, risky sites. Your browser will often tell you whether something is wrong with the website or if you need to leave that website. And finally, make sure you verify the trustworthiness of a site before you make a purchase. It'd be a shame if you were to spend money on a product on a website and that product and the website either turns out to be scamming you uh, and just takes your money. Finally, I'd like to leave you guys with a bonus tip on how to deal with spoofing emails. A spoofing email is an email that looks like it'll come, it comes from yourself, when in reality, it comes from a hacker trying to take your information. For example, this email from Zoom looks like it's telling me about the cybersecurities meeting that I have right now. One way that I can check to make sure is I click View, and then I view the, ve the message source. Now, if I... If I, uh, here it is, the authentic auth authentication results. If I see SPF equals pass, then I know that this email actually came from Zoom. This is another example of a more like modern day scam that hackers are trying to use to try to steal your information. Instead of trying to write a badly word, uh, instead of trying to like copy an email address from a, uh, from a famous uh, email address like Zoom, they make it look like it's in a, a real email address coming from Zoom. So to do this, you just go to view, you, you view the message source, and then you look for the authentication result to see that SPF equals pass. And that way you know if an email comes from a real and trustworthy source. You even get to see the sender IP of the email address over here as well. I think that's the full presentation. I think. Yes, thank you. Thank you guys for listening.